Hello and uh, welcome to Paradise TV. My name is Harun Nadrame and uh, we're just putting together a quick panel to discuss the vote at the National Assembly uh, just a few moments ago. And uh, I'm going to have uh, some guests joining me. And uh, first to come on is uh, Pa Samba Jao. Pa Samba, welcome to Paradise TV. Thank you very much, Harona, for having me. And uh, just joining us now is uh, Salih Tal. Um, Salih, how are you? He's uh, president of the Bar Association of the Gambia. Um, thank you very much, Haruna. Thank you very much, Coach. Um, Haruna, Haruna, I could be better. But <laughs> uh, 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 absolutely. So we're going to start with you, Coach. Um, what do you make of the vote? Or oh, maybe you just give us uh, the, the reasoning behind the whole building of a new constitution, perhaps that's where we should begin. Well, uh, Harona, thank you very much. We all know that uh, given where we came from after 22 years of brutal dictatorship, where the 1997 constitution was turned into an instrument of tyranny, uh, it became necessary for us to write a new constitution that will be forward looking. And this was the essence, the very reason why this government in 2017 mm -hmm. decided to take an mm -hmm. act before the national As uh, assembly to establish the constitution review commission the commission of course did its job it went around the country listened to people but like constitution building is never easy anywhere in the world it came mm -hmm. with its own co controversies and unfortunately the end result is what we had today in the national assembly and we we'll leave to see another day <laughs> Uh, Mr. Tal, we will bring you in here. We'll leave to see another day. Uh, I think uh, a lot of us uh, expected a yes vote. What were your expectations? Um, I'm actually, I wanted a yes vote, but I am not surprised. I mean, I think if uh, if you are keenly following um, the, the, um, the, the process, um, by our own, um, I mean, calculations, I mean, I'm not at all surprised because the threshold is very high. As you know, I mean, they, they require 75 percent to vote in favor of it. Um, I'm not mm -hmm. surprised that uh, the NAMS um, rejected it. And because I think uh, it, it, it appears that a lot of the NAMS don't really know what is at stake. Yes, um, uh, there, there are legitimate concerns about the draft constitution. Uh, but like uh, Coach said, I mean, I mean, constitutional uh, making process is very complex. And has I mean, and mm -hmm. the dynamics. I mean, and, and there are different dynamics and different different interests. And not everybody's interest can be taken on board. But you, it's, it's a consensus building process. You, you look at um, dif different different um, different interests and, and 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 converge into what you believe serves the collective interests. Mm -hmm. But but what it seems like every every group wants their interest to be taken on board. And if it's not taken on board, uh, it's a reason to shoot down the constitution. That's not what the constitution is, is, is all about. So obviously, I mean, if you hear the arguments um, by some of the NAMs, I mean, some of them, with all due respect, were, were I mean, is really misplaced. It also shows that they, don't, they, they did not even read the, the constitution, didn't understand what the issues were. And I don't think, in my opinion, they put the supreme interest of the Gambia, I mean, first. I mean, really, it, it, it's, a, it's a big disappointment. It's a, it's a setback. It's a very aggressive mm. step. I think this, the, the, this is, this, the, the constitution is the most important milestone apart from removing um Jame, uh, i mean Jame from gambia this is the most important milestone for gambia and we have woefully failed at, at that uh said said mati i'll bring you in uh what is at stake now um with 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 uh with this vote what does it mean well it means the whole constitutional process is over now um and to have a new one it has to start from uh from zero from just like the process where we established the crc or even you know i i'm not sure maybe sal can talk about that whether there's a need to pass an act or, or that but but again i think um it needs to uh it, it is over. Uh, it's basically over and, and for me there is no new gambia without a new constitution 
Um, but like I totally agree with Sal, there was less consensus building at Parliament. I've been there two days and, um, you know, people, even though I tried to do last minute lobbying, each one of them, they held on to their positions. And, you know, of course, some of the arguments were not really, really uh, in the interest of the um, of the public. But again, um, uh, at the end of the day, you, we just have to perhaps blame ourselves entirely. Uh, but so what is at stake now is that um, all the reform processes that we have undergone, we have started, everything uh, was also, um, you know, centered around having a new constitution that was subsequently going to uh, push us further into a new democratic setting. But unfortunately, um, uh, this is not the case anymore. But, but Sambajau, uh, uh, tell us uh, well, the opinions around is that maybe the National Assembly members don't even understand the issues well enough. Uh, are we being partisan? Are we not considering the supreme interest of Gambians, as lawyer Saleh Tal puts it? I don't think it's a matter of not understanding it. I think it's just not caring to understand it. Because <laughs> if you if you uh, listen to the arguments that were made, uh, they focused mainly on what? The powers of the president and uh, his term. That was the primary focus of all those people except the APRC uh, NAMS who saw the uh, 1997 constitution as their own. So to me, because if you look at even like the Christians' concerns, because the mm -hmm. Christians were very concerned. And I think uh, this was why when Halifa suggested that maybe uh, 885 should be entrenched mm -hmm. to make sure that nobody will be able to make laws to turn the country into an Islamic state or a Christian state or whatever. You, you, mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if you listen to the general argument, they did not even raise that issue. They only focused was what President Barrow wanted and what affected him. And this is why, to me, I have two people to congratulate today. And that is Ahmad Ba, who I believe was the main uh, driving force uh, in this rejection. And President Barrow, who believes that now he is free to be president as long as possible and on course also, you know, just do what he wants to do so i don't think they didn't understand i think they did not want to understand they didn't care about that because the issues that matter to them they really understood those issues and they were busy to 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 argue it. and that was the powers that the president had or were supposedly going to be taken away from him or his time um but, uh, mr tal when when you look at it a lot of people were of the view that um this has become the battle of the two giants. But perhaps I should reserve that for said Mati, uh, lecturer at the University of the Gambia. And, and get you, uh, Mr. Tal, the uh, combined Western partners had written a communique yesterday and encouraging mm -hmm. National Assembly members to vote yes. And uh, some, in some quarters, this has been viewed as meddling in local politics, and they shouldn't have. In other quarters, they saw it as an encouragement. What's your view uh, of that communique? I mean, I, mean, I, I think, uh, I mean, I think um, it's, it's, it's a very complex issue. It's a very complex issue. Um, and ordinarily, I think, um, for me, uh, what, what I believe is that the, the greater good of Gambia is at stake. Right, and if if um, the the intervention or the nudging of our partners um, will help remind our 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 NAMs of the solemn duty to to put to to put our interests first, if that's what it takes to help a process, I don't have any problem with it. I think what is rather sad is that why does it have to take um, a press release from from uh, from from the EU or or. or from EU, UK, and American embassy. Why does it have? To, it doesn't. It, it didn't even have to get to that because us as civil society, we have been we have been um, advocating and appealing to our NAMs to really to really ask themselves. I mean, or, or, at, at whose behest? At whose behest do I be serving? When I say that, you don't understand. Uh, quote. I, I. 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 What I mean is some of the arguments mm. you hear on the floor. I mean. Uh, I mean. I've never. I cannot fathom. Um, uh, hearing a, a national, I mean, a member of parliament arguing about against their own empowerment. I mean, if you understand what is the role of a parliamentarian, and this is a constitution that will give you more powers of oversight over the executive, I cannot understand why a man will stand on the parliamentary floor and saying, oh, you are giving me too much powers to hold the executive accountable. That clearly demonstrates mm -hmm. a lack of understanding of the role of a parliamentarian. I think that's fundamental. 
aside from other 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 political factors. I think fundamentally, a lot of the NAMs don't understand that they are there to serve us. They are, they they mm -hmm. they 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 our interests should be foremost. They are our representatives. I mean, so the notion the notion the notion that I mean, they, they of course they have they have the right to vote, but have, but they have to vote in our interests. And that's not what happened. And I don't think I don't think they understand that. Of course, there are other machin machinations and, and politics in it, for sure. But really, I, and and I think what we all, what we also forget forget is that they rejected this draft at the second stage, right? At the second mm -hmm. stage, the second stage is to dis to to discuss the principles mm -hmm. and the merits of the draft constitution, the principles mm -hmm. and the merits. Do we need a new constitution now? This constitution, mm -hmm. I mean, before you, has it ticked the boxes? Of, I mean, as prescribed by the CRC Act. I mean, how many of mm -hmm. them have actually gone back and asked themselves, what are, what are those principles? Mm -hmm. those, they, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that argument, I mean, if, if you look at the no camp, did you really hear that argument? No. I mean, mm -hmm. they, 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 they didn't even, they, 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 I mean, they purportedly have um, issues of concern, but those concerns could have been brought at the third stage. I mean, they could have been brought mm. at the committee mm. stage. They could have allowed um, the, 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 the bill to go to committee, and those concerns could have been brought to committee and addressed. And mm. if not addressed, they could have decided at, at the third stage if they think, I mean, at, at, to vote against it. But they actually shut it down before even discussing, mm. I mean, the detail, those details. What does that tell you? I don't think that's good faith, with all due respect. I, I, if, I think if, what it tells me. What it tells me is that, uh, said Mati, I'm going to bring you here. What it tells me is that a lot of people are of the opinion that this is a double versus battle, so to speak. It's a UDP uh, against a current system. Uh, as a political lecturer, do you think a lot of politics, uh, partisan politics, had played a major role in the vote today? Um, I don't know. I think the, the, the process and wherever it is right now is a political process. And, and for me, that's how I see it. And, and, and so uh, for me, I said, let it be politicized. But like Salio said, um, Mr. Tal said, um, you know, at whose interest should it be? And, and, and so, yes, um, I, I, I think also speaking to different areas, different nouns in different areas, I also see this sense that is about also about the eligibility and eligibility, eligibility of Davo and also versus the ineligibility um, of Baro. So, so the personality politics also did play, um, did play a role. But one thing that I also noticed was the fact that um, the no camp were so able to mobilize and coordinate their own efforts, whereas the other camp that say, okay, we want to support, they were just there. Um, there was little um, interaction even among themselves, um, little coordination. So those are some of the, you know, um, some of the um, challenges that also you saw there. But then entirely for me, um, my final analysis was basically we were making a constitution, whether it favored Dabo or whether it favored Baro. Basically for me, that's how I saw the, how I saw the analysis. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pay too much attention on what the NAMS uh, um, did. I, 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 Internet I, issues there. We still have options uh, that we need to. Uh, we need to um, I, I I think Sid Mate is having challenges there with internet. Uh, can you guys hear Said Mati? Because I cannot hear him anymore. No, no, no. I cannot hear him. Uh, yes, I, I think we're struggling to hear him. Uh, pa Pasamba will go to you now before he, he, he comes back. Um, what is next? New Gambia was premised on certain foundations, security reform, a more democratic dispensation, truth reconciliation, new constitution, and, and a transition to, to a greater, newer Gambia. What does this mean right now uh, with this rejection? Uh, because what said Madi had said uh, in the middle, uh, the, in his first intervention, was the fact that the whole transition program, if you like, has come to a halt. Well, he's right. And I think, uh, but here's the thing though, uh, to me, this is a learning process because if you look at what happened, uh, Haruna, this is the first mm -hmm. time in our history where we have a, a draft constitution before the National Assembly, Assembly to pro, uh, promulgate it. And this is mm -hmm. also pretty much the first mm -hmm. time that we have seen citizens actively lobby 
their national mm -hmm. assembly members to vote one way or another. I've never heard of that. And I've been following politics for a very long time. So this is why sometimes you have hit and misses. So people will go over the board. Some people will, you know, st st stay within uh, what you call the parameters. But what is important for us to look at is now what type of Gambia do we want? Because it is easy to just throw our hands in the air and say, you know what, we've tried everything, let's give up. But that's not, the, that's not what yeah. should happen. I think we should continue to, to solder on. And what I would want to suggest uh, now, I think uh, it would be important to at least have a private member bill in the National Assembly that would at least uh, bring us term limits and the second round of voting. Because I don't think we can afford to go to an other elections without term limits. And uh, if, let's say, a new president comes and you want to write an other constitution that is talking about term limits, then you will have the issue of whether the term should be retroactive or not. So I believe that we have to regroup and think about the way forward. And uh, maybe the draft, we, somebody can look at it and see what can be uh, uh, corrected in it and see whether it can be presented an other time again. But uh, we cannot throw our hands in the air and give up. Unfortunately, uh, President Barrow is rejoicing today, but I think uh, this has uh, left a big dent in his legacy because he, he was elected to change uh, the status quo, but instead he has uh, chosen to maintain it. Well, uh, Salah, we'll come back to you. Can this bill be reintroduced as it is? Uh, within reasonable time. Is this a possibility, a yes or no? Um, I think it's unrealistic because, I mean, in the absence of, and it, I mean, obviously, um, the, the, the process has to start again from fresh, fresh, because the CRC has done their work and the bill, um, the bill has been aborted, as they say, as they say, they've um, aborted the baby with its water. Now it's mm -hmm. like you have to, is you have to start again. I mean, if you dust, if you if you were to dust this bill again, I mean, who, who's going to present it? It's not the CRC. The mandate is over. Is it going to be Attorney General's chambers? I don't know. Is it going to be a new CRC commission? I don't know. And all that process, process will take time. Not to mention the fact that it has to be uh, gazetted for three months, and I mean, or everything that needs to be done. And maybe perhaps I mean, I mean, we, I mean, if they believe that there was not enough consultation, which I think is the case. I mean, all those issues around, all those issues of controversy that have been raised by different players. I mean, do you need further consultations again? Um, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not so sure. So really, really, um, I, I, in terms of bringing back this bill, I mean, I think the chances are very slim. Um, to my honest with you, I think the, the option suggested by Coach is more feasible in terms of looking at the possibility of making specific changes that, that we think uh, will level the playing field. That, that is give us a... But, but, Sal mm -hmm. but, but, but Salih, uh, there, there with uh, what Pasama had said, um, the issue of time limits, for example, that is really one of the main reasons why this bill failed in the first instance, no? Well, well, I mean, uh, I, mean it, I, I, think it's, I think it's one of the fundamental... I think it's, there are two reasons. I think two, two, two main reasons. Fundamentally, the retroactive application of the time limit and mm -hmm. and the, the 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 restraint on executive power meaning the subjecting executive power to more scrutiny by parliament in terms of appointments and so on and so forth so basically mm -hmm. the everything that we did not want jame to do meaning jame had too much power because he, he could mm -hmm. hire and fire anybody and jame overstayed because of a time limit these two these two yeah. very issues where, where, I mean, I, I think I think are the, fund, are the reasons this this um this bill was rejected, which is which is really shameful. If, if we are to call this a new Gambia, it is a disgrace. Uh, in fact, it is. Uh, Said Mati, are you with us? We cannot see you, but uh, are you there? Can you hear us? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Yes, I can hear okay. you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We're not seeing you, but uh, we'll we'll have other people's pictures on while you talk. One of the developmental challenges of this country is good internet. Um, so we, we want to believe you're suffering from that. Uh, but the, the, yeah. the, uh, what uh, Pasaba was proposing is if individual components could be raised in the National Assembly mm -hmm. and they can be discussed mm -hmm. and be brought on, whether in fact that in itself uh, will be the way forward and, and be not necessarily bringing the whole bill all over again. Do you see this as a possibility in the near future? 
Yeah, I, 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 I think that's the only way out, especially when it comes to the issues of time limits and all those things, you know, and I don't think the issue and of the debate has always been the issue of time limit. I just had Amul, mm-hmm. uh, Amul Nyasi, who was a very strong opponent of the bill, said he will support any bill that seeks to uh, um, introduce uh, time limits and also um, you know, introduce this majoritarian system that we are talking about. So I think even the the other proponents, they um, they also still interested in that. Whether they are, whether uh, you know, what they did right now would not be what they repeated. Uh, I think still we have an opportunity to try that. Um, but at the end of the day, mm-hmm. also we should just leave it to them. I think the population must stand and um, and demand for it this time, and not also to be too confrontational because sometimes you know, um, when you have somebody who has an authority and you want to force that person, the person will take it personal. And and I think that has also been a contributing factor. Uh, and, and so some of these people just wanted to show us that what they can do, they have the power to do those things and all that. But honestly, I feel there are other options. And I think what um, Coach proposed is, is feasible. And uh, But it requires a lot of talking and a lot of engagement and discussion to ensure that those things happen. Uh, Coach, uh, we're coming back to you now. Um, the way forward is going to be tricky the whole transition project of 2017 has been hijacked somewhat. I mean, uh, there's no cutting corners. This is the honest truth. Now, what do you think this may mean with our development partners going forward? Clearly, the development partners will not be happy with the vote today. No, they, they will not be happy. And that is why those who are mad that, oh, they're interfering in our affairs. You know, there's a saying in Wolof, Nekula Abal Bud Fukon Fukon Nehangai Hall. You know, <laughs> we rely entirely, entirely on, on, on budget support from some of these development partners. And uh, the mm-hmm. whole transition agenda uh, was somewhat uh, financed by uh, the development partners. Uh, I heard the minister talking about, yeah, this, uh, the 116 million was Gambian that they spent it. But, you know, it is what it is. We know that they spent a lot of money. But what is important is, of course, the development partners will not be happy. But we as a people must also come together and uh, chart for the type of Gambia that we want. And we can do mm-hmm. that uh, do that from mm-hmm. a patriotic lens and not necessarily a partisan lens. Because at the end of the day, whatever happens, the people that will suffer the most are our mothers, our sisters who are toiling and moiling every day and living in abject poverty and have been living in it for 55, 56 years. So we all have to go back to the drawing board and look at what is in the interest of the nation and do it. We may not all agree on issues, but I believe this is a tremendous setback for, for our country and uh, it could have provided us an opportunity for a new beginning. Like, like Sal said, uh, this was the second reading. The concerns that they raised, they could have brought that to, to the committee of the whole house or whatever and said, you know what, let's change this, let's change this, let's adju- ad- adjust this language, let's adjust that language. Chances are they could have come out of there with a consensus and a, and a constitution that somebody can hold their nose and vote for. But they rejected the whole process. And uh, again, congratulations to Adam Abaro and Ahmad Ba. But that's that, that's cool. You keep saying this. Uh, congratulations to Adam Abaro and Hamad Ba. Hamad had done a lot of lobbying and it's uh, a dividend. And said, Madi is talking about the yes voters were not lobbying enough, were not communicating amongst themselves enough. But uh, this is politicking. I, I think the, the, the advocacy would have been better. And then the, some of the National Assembly members' mobilization began before. I know days and days ago, a lot of young people are mobilizing, calling, and asking these NAMs to vote in yes. So uh, that in the future, there are some of these uh, critical points that may be looked at and may be analyzed. So how did Baro and uh, Hamad win? Well, they won because, you know, uh, the, the yes vote, they have a, 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 a more difficult threshold. You're talking about 42 members. And uh, all Arab Baro needed was just... 14, 15 people or 16 mm. people to stop it. 16. And yes. something fell on his lap and that was the five APRC voters who were not voting against it maybe because they support Adam Abaro, but who were voting against it because of they believe that the 2007, no, sorry, 1997 constitution is their constitution. And of, co- of course, Ahmad Ba also has his NRP names. And isn't it ironical that every NRP NAM voted the same way as... Uh, 
Ahmad Wallet. I spoke to Ahmad on the phone. He knows what I'm talking about. I sent him a text uh, congratulating him and Adam Baro because they got their wish. But but the 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 the, the final the issue here is these people. I believe we have focused on one thing and one thing only that is killing this draft. And you spoke to all of them. I, I spoke to Ahmad, and interestingly, he's my guy. We've been we've known each other throughout the struggle. Call, I give, do all that. And I posed mm. a question to him. Mm. I'm like, Ahmad, I was not on the call alone. I was on the call with Musa Jang and Bankamani. They are witnesses. I'm like, mm. between the 1997 constitution and the 2020 draft, which is better? And he told me, in no uncertain terms, that the draft is superior to the 1997 mm. constitution. But of course, he had mm. his, his problems. His problems were what? This retroactive application of the law in terms of term limits. He mentioned other issues that we encountered. But like I'm saying, if you look at it, with all the issues, like mm. I said earlier, all the issues raised, mm. nothing dealt with the general welfare of the people other than Barrow, his term, mm. his powers, and maybe one mm. thing, it's not fair that everybody else that retires may not be able to get uh, life pension, but the judges would get that. So it was more about self, and not what was in the, in the general interest of the people. And the, uh, if you look at the lobbying, we are not used to lobbying. But the citizens, the general citizens, were the one lobbying for yes. So the no, they had two people. And, you know, they got what they got. Unfortunately, we live with this decent until we can finally birth a new Gambia. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I think this is a possibility. Uh, Tal we've been discussing and civil society had been interested and had played a pivotal role in trying to get the U.S. vote out. What is next for you, civil society, that is? Well, um, I mean, first of all, I, I think um, I would like to say that um, civil society, um, is a, a, a lot of lessons learned, first of all. We learned, we've learned a lot of lessons. I think, like Coach said, um, the, the yes cam were more organized. I think in my in, with respect, I think civil society was very reactionary because really um, uh, we realized I mean, late in the day that um, right about Wednesday, Thursday, that a lot of governments didn't realize that come Monday or Tuesday, this constitution could be rejected. A lot of people were, didn't understand what was, what was at stake. So I think the first thing we tried to do was to raise the stakes so that the population would understand what is at stake. And I think... Um, we were very successful in, give, in getting the conversation, uh, I mean, in all, 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 all fora for, for the citizenry to know what is at stake and also mm -hmm. to try and, and mm -hmm. influence their NAMs. But I think that at that stage, the die was already cast. I think uh, a, lot of, a lot of the NAMs had already made up their minds, I mean, as to which way they will vote. I mean, so, I mean, for, for civil society, of course, we, we I mean, uh, our, our job is, is ongoing. Uh, I think our job is... For me, what the lesson to learn is we need to wake up as Gambians. We are still sleeping. We are still uh, we are still in a slumber, and the 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 NAMs have sent a very clear message that that the interest of their their political interests outweighs the interest of the general population, and that is what we need to change in this country. We need to make sure that our 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 politicians, our leaders, understand that they serve at the behest of the people. This was a people-centered um, constitution. That had that was that the people were extensively consulted, so the, the draft mm -hmm. was a reflection by and large the will of the people, and the, our nouns didn't even allow us to decide whether or not we like that draft. And I think that is a very strong statement, and we will not forget that statement. So we, I think, we we'll continue to advise ourselves as a society, and also to continue to educate. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. the, the population, because the population needs to understand that they have a civic responsibility to, to make sure that their nouns act on on their behalf. I think I think we're still learning. I mean, we're still unlearning the old ways of of, of, of dictatorship, and still get still getting our feet wet in in this new way of democracy. Democracy is a is a is a messy business, as my friend Daniel likes to say, and and we're still learning. I mean, I mean, we we'll live another day to fight another fight, but we will not give up, because I think it was much harder. To, it was much harder to remove uh, yeah, Jame here. I think I think it's much easier to educate Gamers to know and assert themselves and make sure that they hold their leaders accountable and that make sure that no other leader will ever trample on the rights and dignity of Gambians. Uh, said Mati, uh, as a political observer and uh, a lecturer in political science, uh, what are the lessons that we need to learn from what had happened today? 
Well, for me, it's simple. It's that um, democracy is about competition, but it's also about consensus building. And uh, to the extent to which we can build consensus when we disagree, uh, I think for me that is important. And, um, and you know, because at the end of the day, um, of course, it is difficult for us um, being in a small country with a uh, very small population, small elite, um, you know, and, and, and sometimes uh, discussions can be personalized, but then therefore I think there needs to be mechanisms or extra players um, that need to come from time to time to engage in that. But one of the other things that I, I think that we need to be doing is to organize, like Coach have mentioned and many others have mentioned before, that there needs to be a national dialogue. For me, I feel Gambians, both in the rural and urban, are not talking. Gambians in the diaspora and home are not talking. Gambians in government and outside government are not talking. Politicians are not talking to their people. You know, there are a lot of things. Nobody is talking to nobody. And I think uh, for us to move forward, we need to start speaking. And, you know, and in that discussions, we need to always put on the basic frameworks that will continue to govern us. The respect for democracy, the respect for time, I mean, um, time limits. Those are the issues that uh, we all agree on. I, I think those are the that, that that should be the starting point. But at the end of the day, also um, we also need to realize that this country is not only ours. Um, we have kids, we have will have grandkids, and there will be next generation of Gambians that need to come in. So therefore, whatever we do, we must not only consider those that are now here, but those that are coming forward, because otherwise we'll leave a very terrible um, country to the next generation. And where, where would they be? Uh, Pasamba, uh, you, you were there standing by with us as well. Uh, Pasamba, really, really, politics is messy business, uh, they say. But yes. what could we have done differently as a general public? Because we did not even get a chance with the document. And that's the sad part of it. Well, I think uh, if there is any lesson that must be learned here is that uh, we need to do a lot more engagement and civic education in our country because uh, a document that is as important as this, I'm thinking after the final product, uh, all media should have at least uh, been talking about this a lot more so that everybody would hear about it. But I think uh, because maybe with COVID, people were focused more on other stuff because the constitution is an important thing. This is supposed to be something that should guide the country for the next at least 20, 30, 40, 50 years. So people must be engaged. And I think uh, we should all learn that uh, in politics, uh, you need to be at the table or you are left behind. You know, we cannot allow other people to be making decisions on our behalf, on our behalf because we choose not to participate. Uh, so I think a participatory uh, a democracy should be entrenched in our country where people uh, will be fully involved. Because like uh, uh, Sal said, maybe if the people knew the process. There were a lot of us who were caught off guard when they just said, oh, the first reading is Monday. Maybe they have to do a better job of uh, at least informing people. And I also believe that encourage people to be also participating in the process because the first move that has really left me worried was when the National Assembly decided that uh, the media were not going to be allowed in on the first day uh, because mm -hmm. they say COVID. And then three days later, what did we see? The chamber was full to capacity because the president was supposed to deliver a state of the union, uh, state of the nation address. So, and leaves me scratching my head asking, was it because of COVID or because they didn't want the citizens to participate in the process by going there and seeing what they announced we're saying? So, but we have a long way to go and we'll continue to solder on. We have done it before and we'll continue to do it unless, until uh, we get what is better for our country. Until we get what is better for our country, Salih Utal, somebody is texting here and saying uh, Jame will be rejoicing uh, that uh, the no vote was cast today. What do you think? We are not hearing you. I think what happened to Sate is happening to you now. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear us? Um, you know, I, I mean, I, yeah. okay. Jame okay. was rejoicing. Yeah. Yes. I think. Um, I think one of the one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the consequences of of moving ahead with the 1997 constitution is, for, is is that, for example, that constitution was designed by Jame for Jame to perpetuate Jame, and mm -hmm. and even uh, even if you look at the 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 uh, immunity cl the clauses immunity clauses that they have very um very strong immunity clauses that purport to limit. 
um, holding JAM and the the uh, APRC um, joint members accountable. I think these are also consequences that would um, this this will, this will have consequences in our transitional justice uh, process. After this, I mean, TRRC finishes work and makes its recommendation. I mean, if 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 this constitution is still in force, we will, we will have some legal hurdles to, in terms of holding um, Jami and his accomplices um, accountable. So, I, of course, I mean, if 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 I was Jami, I would I would I would have a sigh of relief because, and then I think it's also it's sim symbolically. I mean, this is what we 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 we, we I mean, as a country, we elected we elect, we elected Alan Bar to replace Jami, and and we are, we are still yet not we have, we still have still not replaced the system. The system is underpinned by this constitution. So of course, so Jami will feel vindicated because I mean the constitution that we were crying about, I mean uh, the, the constitution and the rule laws that Solo Sendang was protesting about, I mean and in this day and age, three and a half years also down the line, I mean people who elected have basically voted not to move forward and effectively staying with the constitution. Of course, if 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 I was Jami, I'll, I'll be laughing. But I mean, I think uh, I, we should not focus on Jami because the country is bigger than Jami. The country is bigger than Arambaro. The country is bigger than of any any particular individual we we are trying to craft a new gambia that that is not based on individuals that is based on systems and processes that puts the citizen at the center i think that is the battle we need to fight and i, I want and my 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 disappointment in this process is when i even engage people who are fairly educated and exposed on this constitution they always see it as either one camp or the other and i'm like no and and i think to, unfortunately that that is that that is what works for the politicians because they put us they make it binary. It's either on this camp or that camp. And this, when it comes to this constitution, it was not about being in one camp or another camp. It's about what was in the supreme interest of the Gambia, and that was that was lost in the debate. And like Coach said, I did not see and I did not see arguments canvassed on the floor. That was about, I mean, apart from uh, the issue of language, using the language um, language of the constitution, I I hardly uh, listened to arguments about how can we make this constitution better serve Gambia. I mean, if that was the reason it was rejected, I would not be this desolate. I would have been said, "That's good. Let's look at it again." But it was not, it was never, nothing about I mean the interest of the Gambia at all. It was not, it was all, all about the political elite. So we have to really move. This, the political elite of Gambia should really now look at how they can put Gambia um, first, the citizen. And this has for 50 years plus, we are still on. We still have the same system, and it, it, it's time we shake the system. This system should really be centered on how do we employ the citizen to make sure that those who are governing are governing for the citizens. Today, our parliamentarians chose against citizen. They went against citizen, and I mean, and and, and that is disgraceful. In 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 twenty twenty, in twenty twenty, so called New Gambia, NAMS are rejecting that a constitution which is not perfect, but way better than the the nineteen ninety seven. Did not even want to give it a chance to see how it can be improved. That sends a very strong message. And I think Gambians should wake up. All of us should wake up. I think Gambians should wake up. Uh, said Mati, I think Salu is raising an important point, which I, in fact, almost forgot. And that's the fact of immunity, indemnity, and all of those that were already entrenched clauses in the 1997 constitution. What happens now? Uh, at the end of the TRRC, I mean, th these are issues I, I, I wasn't even thinking about. But what happens to, to that whole process then, in this case, if the 1997 constitution will remain in force? Well, I mean, we have seen Madhya, the, the, how the, the Janet Commission that was... Oh, yes, yes, I'm here. Are you here? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yes, I'm, we I'm can hear you now. Like we have seen, I, are you getting me? You getting me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello? Go ahead. Yeah, so Yes, go ahead. I was saying, like, uh, we've seen how the, the report of uh, was, was, was treated. Um, and, and, and so uh, perhaps a similar fate will, um, you know, the, the TRRT will, will, will experience the same, the same thing. But then the issue is not also about what the government is going to do, but it's about how the public is going to perceive these institutions now that we have, um, you know, this, still the same 1997 constitution um, um, instead of the new draft that was supposed to uh, be the starting point of a never again campaign because already um, the institutional and legal framework are still intact. Um, the excesses that Jamie enjoyed still, Barok can enjoy those things and he's enjoying it. So, so at the end of the day, this will further 
um, disconnect the population from the from the political class. But then there shouldn't be any this sort of disconnection. It favors the political class, but it does not favor the uh, it does not favor the public. So public needs to start taking ownership. Like Sal said, we need to wake up and we need to start taking ownership. Be contacting our parliamentarians, be engaging with everybody that we need to. To engage. For me, I think um, all the processes, not only the TRRC, but the security sector reform also. And we have seen several times how the military, for instance, have queried and, uh, you know, questioned the fact that their, their their roles are not well defined in the current 1997 constitution. We still have uh, police using the 1950-something act, you know, to run to run their affairs. Um, so so I think the in moving forward, the government needs to come, and, come out and tell us um, how are they going to go about all these other different legislation that were also proposed, and we are also waiting for the for the for the uh, the constitutional uh, process to complete? So there is a lot of things at stake, and um, but it only depends on the public and how we uh, will want to take it from here and then. Uh, Pasamba, I'm coming back to you. What does it mean if we are still going to continue using the 1997 constitution? What does it really mean? Well, it means that Baroque will just have the enjoy the same <laughs> privileges that were accorded to Jame. And uh, to me, those that are talking about the transition period, listen, uh, the justice or TRRC, does anybody see anything from Adam Baro that suggests that he cares about holding Jame accountable? Yeah. You know, all we see is they've been uh, hobnobbing with the APRC. Maybe this would make it easier for them, you know. But uh, I've also seen people within the APRC who are talking about, oh, you know what, with this uh, draft, uh, uh, what's his name, Jame will not be able to run, but with this, uh, the 1997, he can. No, Jame cannot run again because of, if you look at the 1997 constitution, I'm not a lawyer, but Sal can help me here. If you are, while holding public office, if you are holding a public office and you are fined to be liable by a commissioner of inquiry, you are barred from holding from from running for the presidency and jam jam jamme was found liable by by a commission of inquiry what yeah. it is sad and i also believe that even the 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 trial of yankuba uh mm -hmm. yankuba what's his name again Ture. 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 you know has really put a yeah, dent okay. in this argument that maybe they've been uh, you know indemnified to the extent that they cannot be tried because that was his argument but uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the day uh, the winner in the short term is Adama Baro, and the loser in all this are the Gambians and what we all collectively fought for. And uh, it is sad definitely to see somebody like uh, Honorable, I'll call her Honorable just because of this program, Fatumata Jawara, voting against this. And this is the same lady who was tortured, abused massively, mm -hmm. her friend killed because they were fighting supposedly for electoral reform and this draft constitution was supposed to give you everything that you were fighting for term limits uh level playing field uh 50 plus one those were the ideals that got solo sending to go out so if fatuma, fatuma Jawara went out for that and got abused but because of position today and whatever you can get uh, from a sitting president, you will forego those principles. I think it says a lot about, about Gambians. But again, uh, we are not going to despair. We're going to push on and try to fight until we at least are able to uh, have a Gambia that is free of all this uh, selfishness and, and unpatriotic moves by people. Um, Sal, uh, we've lost your image. I hope you are there. Yes, I'm here. Uh, okay, we, 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 we cannot see you, but we were talking about what happens uh, if we continue using the 1997 constitution, which obviously uh, is the case now. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think, um, like, I mean, I, I think I, re I already mentioned that, I mean, like, even, I mean, even though the Yanko Boturi case um, is still before the courts, I think the issue of uh, immunity has to be has to be determined by the Supreme Court. I mean to know whether or not it bars the hearing of, of of a case. But my 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 reading of of the of the constitution is is, is very different. And my reading that is that 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 provision really I mean if it's if it's for the latter, it seeks to preclude the try. I mean the, the 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 I mean I mean the trial of any of those people who are acting. I mean in the course of their duties as APRC, AFPRC, AFPRC. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, but I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a judge, or, or and I think that matter should be. Resolved. I mean, it's, it just makes it harder. I mean, just creates unnecessary hard hurdles. So, but 
I mean, but I think, I mean, I mean, in the wider scheme of things, I mean, a lot, I mean, there, there, there are a lot of the, the entire transition, uh, I mean, process mm -hmm. is anchored on having a new republic founded on a founded on a new constitution, and this constitution, uh, I mean, would introduce new institutions and also empower existing accountable institutions. I mean, like the, the like the Human Rights Commission, and also into an anti-corruption. I mean, commission, and even what it, I mean, I mean, what require certain requirements of, of public officials, which are de deficient in the current con constitution. So I think, I mean, I think um, going, moving, moving, moving. I mean, being governed on the this, on the, this 1997 constitution towards this election. For me, it means it's business as usual. Unless we have, I mean, some, I mean, I mean, some fundamental changes done quickly, which are. Changes, I mean, Sir, can, you I, I, can you hear me? Uh, yes, you went off for a moment. Yes, which were yes. fundamental too? Uh, I mean, I mean, we, I mean, we basically need to make, I mean, quickly make some uh, f fundamental changes in the, elect in the electoral laws, you know, in the constitution, like Coach said, to, act to at least ensure that, I mean, all is not lost now against the, the 2021 election. I think, the, I mean, I think this is very, very critical. But I think also, I mean, in terms of, I mean, the aspirations of Gambia, because you, uh, it's not only about the, the tangible and intangibles, the hope that Gambians have that they will have a new constitution. A third republic mm. is all dash, mm. and having mm -hmm. taken us through that journey, yeah. really for me, I mean that 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 you cannot measure what that does to us as a people, because we, I mean, we 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 came from a long way, and we are starting to to rebuild our confidence as as citizens in a democratic country with certain rights and responsibilities, and this was the constitution that was finally consolidating all of that. For, for for that to, for that opportunity just taken away, I think I think that that damage is is, is immeasurable, and I really I think but I think the upside is that Gambians would learn to 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 be more active and engaged and participate in the political processes, and it also mm -hmm. shows that we we need to have more sound educated, I mean politicians, and politicians not only educated but politicians who actually care about the country. And also civil society, we need we need more we need more sound uh, Gambians to participate in in, in in civil society. People tell me, oh, why why are you in civil society? I mean, it's I mean, I'm not a politician, but I care about my country. I don't belong to any political party, but you, you can contribute to your country without being in part of a political party. You can come to civil society and also and do your part. And but if if, if in all in, in in all leadership spaces, we need the best and brightest to be part of it. And that's how you bring about change. We've seen, I mean, we've seen what happens in Parliament. We've seen it broad daylight. As governments, we've listened to our NAMs and some of the and the caliber of some of our NAMs. We've listened to them. Do I mean these are people who have our destiny in their hearts? Is that the gamble we want? We need we need more of the young people to come and participate in politics, in civil society, so that we can take our country where it should go. So that we can take our country where it should go. Uh, said Mati Jau, you're seeing some of the comments. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Someone I'm, is saying, I'm, I'm they, they say we should speak local languages, I guess. <laughs> yes, but we have about 12 minutes to go. I, I don't want to keep you gentlemen for longer than an hour. Um, some of the yeah. comments, uh, said Mati, uh, you, you're monitoring some of the comments. Yes, yes. Um, I, I think it speaks to this, the same issues that we have been raising, the, the need for uh, people are frustrated. I can sense that and also the need to, to look forward and look ahead. Um, because right now for me, um, I feel uh, no matter how frustrated I am, I, I, I totally accept the process. I feel it was a democratic process because some people did not um, put the interest of the public at heart, like Coach said and Sal. Uh, there should have been possibilities of pushing things to to um, committee level, and and for me the past two days that's all I've been trying to do talk to these different uh, positions and try to see whether they can agree and and you know go to committee level and then address those issues. It didn't happen, so they started to go this um, you know the winner taking all route. So now like 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 um, Craig said, uh, Barrow has won, um, and and so we need to prepare for what happens tomorrow. We need to prepare for what happens tomorrow. Coach, we'll give you two minutes uh, in closing. Uh, if you can do a summary of what your projections are in the run-up to the 2021 elections. Uh, some of these people are proposing 
whether or not amendments could be made to the 1997 uh, constitution to ensure uh, a, a level playing field as far as electoral laws are concerned and other issues like time limit. I don't see this happening, but I don't know. What do you think? Well, uh, I think we, all we can do is just try. But one thing that we cannot do is just fold our hands and just throw it in the air and say, you know what, nothing is going to happen. Uh, these are things that happens in, uh, in, happen in any democratic uh, society in the United States here. We have back this thing. Uh, some things here in England, the same thing. But when they happen, what citizens do is to dust, they dust themselves up and get back to work. So those that are fully invested in what is in the interest of the general uh, population of Gambia, of the Gambia uh, should co continue to work together, uh, forging, forging ahead to at least have a Gambia of liberty, dignity, and prosperity. But we cannot give up. Let's, let's remember, this bill was not rejected by the majority in the National Assembly. It was rejected by a minority in the National Assembly because the threshold is you can have 16 and they reject it. They had 23. So we at least had more people who supported it and those that rejected it. So let's start working on those. And uh, like they said, yes, we need to be able to at least have uh, legislation that will be able to uh, provide us a level playing field so that when we go to elections, we will be able to elect people and our, our, our wishes and our aspirations will not be you know, thwarted by anybody. And coach, somebody is asking, uh, how can Baro be the winner? Well, because it, it benefits Barrow more than anybody. We know that even looking at the, the performance today of the Attorney General, that was the most unenthusiastic performance that I've ever seen in defense of a bill that was supposedly tabled by the minister himself. You could see that he, I don't think he cared to defend it very well. And we all know, uh, we've, we've seen what came from the, from, the, uh, from the executive in terms of this draft constitution. They had a problem with the whole process. Everything pretty much they had a problem with, especially things that had to do with the presidency. And the arguments that were made, especially by those that support Barrow, were in line with everything that Barrow was talking about. It centered almost F, uh, on the powers of the presidency. So yes, Barrow won in this instance because this is the outcome that he wanted. Other people wanted a different outcome, so you got to give it to him. But um, uh, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will disagree a little with Coach. Hello? Yeah, go, yeah ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'll disagree a little with Coach in terms of the performance of the minister. I, you know, I, I, I think the minister came in the last um, part of the process. He is not exposed to, um, you know, the, the, the kind of politics that was in the parliament. And this was a political process. Let's not forget about that. This was about politics. And it was real politics that was happening. The minister could have shouted could have convinced them 10, 10 times and he said so many things right um he could have you know um see he said too many things right but at the end of the day these people already made up their mind you know it, this constitution was already out long since they already made up their mind that okay this time is our time to pay back and and so that's what they did and that's what exactly came out you know the actual works so, so the minister for me, I, I think he just did what he could, and I think he he, he took a good job position, and that's what he could do. Uh, Salutar will give you uh, closing remarks. That what is in the future of politics in the Gambia, and what happens uh, as we get ruled by the 1997 constitution, while we continue being ruled by it? Uh, I, I think uh, the future of Gambia, Gambia is bright, for sure. I mean, in as much as we, um, uh, I mean, many, 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 I think the majority of Gambians, are, I mean, are distraught by this setback. But I think um, a lot of lessons learned. Um, yeah. It shows that um, in the absence of an engaged citizenry, um, you can have tyranny. And the beginning of tyranny is if you don't take steps to control the excess of our institutions, including the, the, the uh, parliament or, and, and the executive. Now, I think um, this is a wake-up call for all of us Gambians to not to take it for granted. And um, like Sid said, I think we need to really have um, do some soul searching, and really we need to have a national conference to really shape the Gambia we want that is driven by the people. If you recall, uh, uh, when we came with, when we came up with Gambia decided, there was a vacuum, there was a political vacuum, the politician not do anything at that time and it was the people of gambia that came together and 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 and, and were defiant against tyranny and 
and, and galvanize garments of all walks of life together on the, on, on the one voice, the voice of the garment people. And that voice st which stood tyranny and dictatorship. So really, I think um, we, 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 as a people also, we need to really show the politicians that the power resides in the people. We, the, we have delegated them, we have, we have given them the power. The power they have is delegated power and authority at, on our behalf. They need to understand that uh, at the end of the day, whatever they're doing, they do it on our behalf. And that we will actually make 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 we will make them pay if they derogate from discharging their responsibility their 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 responsibilities and powers honorably in our favor against our favor. So really, I mean, for me, I think all is not lost. I mean, we, we, we a lot of lessons learned. We'll continue to do what we do, and we always put Gambia first, no matter what. Always put Gambia first, said Mati. Uh, your concluding remarks uh, in terms of. Uh, what the future holds as we continue uh, to be governed by the 1997 Constitution? Uh, well, for me, I think um, the, the struggle is not lost. I, I think there is still opportunity to, to have, to strengthen democracy in this country and then have parliament to pass that. I think um, this is already an international embarrassment for the country and I think they will want to be um, you know, um, commit a second embarrassment. Um, and, and so that's an opportunity that we can build up. But at the end of the day, my message is still the same. Gambia is Gambia. We are all Gambians. Uh, it doesn't matter for me. It has never mattered whether it was APRC or anybody. What matters is what are we discussing and what are we agreeing on? And I think issues of accountability must continue to be the driving force. But at the end of the day, we must know that what, at this point in time, we are renegotiating power. Uh, we are trying to define a new feature, and that feature must be inclusive, must be uh, participatory, uh, even though we've lost the constitution. But still, I think we can forge ahead and try to fix here and there, as proposed earlier, you know, by uh, by various speakers. So for me, um, uh, I am frustrated today, but hopefully by tomorrow I'll be back on, and then I'll try to uh, do what I do, uh, continue to research, and then show people where we need to go and, you know, how to, uh, how, how to go there. But again, it has to be whether that's where we want to go and the decision the outcome will all be ours we have to be responsible for that thank you very much uh gentlemen uh pastor bajau charlie utal said mati jau uh for being with me uh discussing uh the no vote today and the rejection in other words of the draft constitution thank you gentlemen and uh, all the best of luck to us and our country and let's see what happens in the coming weeks and months as we approach uh, 2021 elections. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Havana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.